Хазаку Барух Абатай. Good evening. Uh, it says in uh, Shuhanu that uh, we mentioned this yesterday also a little bit, but uh, we'll talk a little bit more about it. It says in Shuhanu that if a person, how should he divide up his day to learn Torah? Every person is obligated to learn Torah every day. In the morning, at night, he has to learn. Uh, how does she divide it up? So says in Shuhanu, Maran Shuhanu, he says, if he has nine hours to learn every day, that's a lot of hours. Uh, if, if you have that much time, you should learn three hours a day Tanakh, Bible, 24 books of the Tanakh, three hours a day Mishnah, which is Halachot, uh, Psukot, and also three hours a day Talmud. This is the way you should divide it up. Three hours this, three hours this, three hours this. So it's going to be your right no? Uh, yeah, well, you know, <laughs> you know what it is? If you, if you don't do it this way, you'll never be a big rabbi. You know what I mean? You have to do it this way if you want to be a big rabbi. Give me shites for So, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I mean, I see, I see what you mean, but uh, that's the way it says over there. Uh, but it says also something else interesting. It says that once a person already learned for a long time, he became a big rabbi, like you said, you know? He became a big rabbi, big chacham. So he already knows the Tanakh. You know, he knows the Bible already. So he knows it good. By the way, you should know that in Teman, you know, in the Yemenites, I heard that people over there, they knew the whole Tanakh by heart. You know, Baal Peh, they know. You know? So they said, if you want to be a rabbi over there in, in uh, Yemen, Teman, you have to know the whole uh, Tanakh Baal Peh. Otherwise, you couldn't be a rabbi. Can you imagine? So can you imagine? They, yeah, they almost do like this. So Tanakh, you know, once a person has learned Tanakh, he already knows it pretty good. What does that mean? Almost Baal Peh. Like, you know, something like that. He knows what's the meaning of Tanakh? Exactly. Torah, Nevi'im, Ketuvim. Right? Torah is Hamisha Kum Torah. Nevi'im is the prophets. Right? And Ketuvim is whatever came after the prophets. Mishle, Tehilim, right? Daniel, all these things, right? But they're called their Ketuvim. This is called Tanakh. This is 24 books of Tanakh. So uh, it says over there that once you learn Tanakh, you became already expert in Tanakh. So then, what do you do after that? It says the Shulchan Ruch that you don't have to learn Tanakh anymore three hours a day. Because you already know. So now, what you do is, you, be, you start spending more time in Talmud, you know? Most of your time should be in Talmud, it says. That, that's the way it is, you know? So, less Tanakh and more Talmud because you already know Tanakh very good. So now you've got to spend all your time in Talmud. Okay, so it says in the Tosfot, it says, comes and says Tosfot, that when a person is learning Talmud Babli, you know, the Babylonian Talmud, uh, he's doing all three of these things. He's doing Tanakh, he's doing Mishnah, and he's doing also Talmud. Everything is in there. Because it brings over the Psukim from the Tanakh, it brings the Mishnayot also, it also brings, of course, the Talmud is there, that's what it's for. So it says in Tosot that if you're learning Talmud Babri, you have everything over there, everything. Tanakh, Mishnah, and Talmud. So you're doing everything. You don't need anything else. That's what it says in Tosot. Is this halakha damet? The truth is, you know, that if you go to the Ashkenazi Yeshivot, over there, they tell you like this, you know. If you're learning Talmud, it's okay, you don't need nothing. That's it, just learn Talmud. You know, but that, the truth is that the Rambam and the Shulchan Ruch didn't pass in this way. They didn't pass like the Tosfot. The halakha is not like Tosfot. So what does that mean? Even if you're learning Talmud Bavli, it doesn't mean you're patur, that you're exempt from learning uh, Tanakh and Mishnah. That's a separate uh, seder. You know, it has nothing to do one with the other. Why is the halacha not like Tosfot? What's the reason why? The reason is because even if you're learning Talmud and you're seeing over there some psukim from the Tanakh, it doesn't mean that you can become baki expert in Tanakh just because you, you learn those psukim. It just says, uh, you know, here, one pasuk over here, one pasuk over there. It doesn't make you into a baki. It doesn't make you into an expert in Tanakh. So therefore, a person has to learn Tanakh, you know? And not like, not like Tosfot. He has to actually learn Tanakh from beginning to end. You know what they say, right? There's a funny uh, joke that they say. What do, we pers- what do we call a person who didn't learn Tanakh? You know, and he n- knows other things, you know, in Torah. But Tanakh he doesn't know. You know what we call him? Amaretz Deoraita. That's what we call him, right? But why Deoraita? Because Deoraita is the Torah. He doesn't know Torah. And he's, uh, and he's, you know, so there's also another joke, you know, that my friend told me, some Ashkenazi guy told me. He said something funny. He said, you know, the, Ash- the Ashkenazi Yeshivot, they don't learn Tanakh so much. Not so much, you know, almost nothing there. You know, so he told me that uh, in the Ashkenazi Yeshivot, he said, you know what they do? You know, if they want to, if they want to know something in Tanakh, right? So what happened was that one time, uh, one guy came and said, you know, in the Gemara it says Moshe Rabbeinu and Aharon. You know, one was with the other, 
and uh, the story, you know, what happened with them, one was not jealous of the other. So he says, you learn from there, you learn from there, about all these stories they brought there, that Moshe Rabbeinu and Aaron, they were brothers. Mm-hmm. You understand? You get the joke? They should be laughing, but you didn't get the joke. You know what it means? It means that they're learning from people in the Gemara, that Aaron and Moshe are brothers, because they never read Humash before. They never read Humash. You understand? This is what... Uh, well, this is not this is not serious, you know. Person shouldn't be like that. He's learning from the people in the Talmud that Moshe and Aaron were brothers. Uh, this is a, this is a, this is a joke in itself, right? That's the whole thing. So that's exactly why it's not good to be that way. Each person should be learning also. And uh, the truth is, you know, that there's different she thought about this as well. I, I've heard that the Ashkenazim, what they do is uh, after they finish already learning the Tanakh, you know, the big Chachamim, some of them what they do is. They uh, learn Tanakh like every, then once a month. That's it. Once a month they, they learn Tanakh. Once every month. You know? Uh, and the rest of the time they're doing Talmud. But the truth is, you know, that Maran, Shalom, Ravadia, this was not his way. And it's not the Sephardi way, by the way, as well. Maran, you know how he used to do? He used to learn Tanakh every day. How much? How much Tanakh? He was, he was learning four prakim. Four prakim of Tanakh every day he was learning. Where was he learning Tanakh, Maran? You know where he was learning? You'll never guess. He was learning in his car. You know, when they would take him somewhere to drive, you know. So the car was like, for him, Maran, it was like a Bet HaMidrash, you know. It was, it was, he had a BMW, you know. So this big BMW, it was Bet HaMidrash. You know, so he used to sit over there. He had a lamp in the back, you know. And he would light the lamp, and he would learn Tanakh in the, uh, in the car. There were other Chachamim, like uh, Rabbi Steinman, you know, who was the Rosh Shiva Panovich. They, they asked him, what do you do when you're in the car? What do you, what do you do? So he says, I read Tehillim. You know, so some, some people read Tehillim in the car. Uh, some people are learning Tanakh. You know, like Maran, he was learning Tanakh. So you see from there, by the way, one thing, you know, that a person shouldn't do Bitul Torah when he's in the car, you know? Why are you just sitting there looking at the sky, you know, looking at the trees, you know? Well, what happened? Learn something. You know, say something. Say something in Torah, you know, in the car. You know, it says, Vlech Techa no? What does that mean, Vlech Techa You should be learning also when you're going on the derech. This is, the, this is the thing, you know? So therefore, the, the, the Chachamim, who are wise and makpid, they're also learning when they're going on the derech as well. You know, not to do bitul Torah. This is the way it is, you know? So Tanakh, they were also learning. Baruch Hashem. Four prakim a day. If you learn Tanakh four prakim a day, you finish it every six months. You know? So it's good. You know? Can you imagine? Every six months you finish. You start again. So when you do like that, you know, you know almost Baal Peh, the whole Tanakh. You know, like Baal Peh, like orally. So it's a very good thing, you know? So as we said that uh, a person should concentrate more, once he learns Tanakh very good, he should concentrate more on Talmud. So what is Talmud? You know, so Talmud is not only Gemara, also you have to get to the Halakha as well. You know, you know what I mean? Like in other words, a person has to start with the Sugya, and he starts with the Sugya, he learns Rashi and Toslot, and then he has to learn the Rishonim, and Bet Yosef, Shulchan Aruch, you know, like this. So this way it gets to the Halakha as well. Why? Because if you're just learning Talmud and you're not getting to the Halakha, so what's the point? You know, just intellectual exercise. This is not exactly such a good thing. You know, even though sometimes we do that to learn the ways of Iyun, how to do Iyun properly. In the Ashkenazi Yeshivot, they teach you, you know, how to learn the Gemara, how to think properly in the Gemara. This is also something good. Maran used to say, Yalba Shalom, Ravadia, it's good to go to the Ashkenazi Yeshivot like three, four years, you know, to learn their way of learning Talmud. Why? Because they know how to analyze Talmud, you know. They're, they go deep in the Talmud. So to learn their analysis in Talmud, it's a good thing to, to, to learn this, you know. So a person should, should also do that if he wants to be a big chacham. Learn with the Ashkenazim for three, four years. It doesn't hurt you. But then, once you finish that, that you get married, so then you should go back to the Sephardi way. What does that mean, the Sephardi way? To learn halakha. Right? So how do you learn halakha the best way? You learn Tur, Bet Yosef, Shulchan Aruch, right? And the Achronim, this is the best way to learn. Because this way you're getting everything. The Gemara, the Rashi, Tosfot, right, the Rishonim, the Achronim, everything is there, you know, and you learn the Halakha, Pesukah, and you got everything in your hands. That's it, you know, so that's all you need. Maran needs to tell us, Shalom, that if you learn Bet Yosef, you don't really need to learn Mishnah Brua. Mishnah Brua is a nice book. He gives you over there a lot of poskim, brings a lot of poskim over there. But to understand the Sugya, to understand it well, in the Talmud, all you need to do is to learn... Um, to learn, to learn Bet Yosef. You, get, you understand everything over there. You get, you get the whole picture over there. So therefore, the proper way to do, especially the Sephardim, this is what we do. You know, what we do is that we learn to Bet Yosef, Shulchan Aruch, and we get to Halakha, and Ma'an used to tell us that if a person does this, 
you know, he learns like this, one day he's going to become Gadol and Torah, he's going to become a Posek. He says also in the Chida, Maran Chida, he says, if you don't learn Bet Yosef, you're not allowed to pass in Halakha. You know, only you can, you can pass in Halakha if you, if, you, um, if you learn Bet Yosef. Because Bet Yosef teaches you how to pass in Halakha, he teaches you what you need to know to pass in Halakha. So this is the way, you know. So as we said, right, that what about, what about the Pshutim, you know, Anashim Pshutim, you know, they don't have time for these things. They're working all day, you know, whatever. So what should they do? You know, how should they get the Torah? We mentioned that, uh, the other day, we mentioned there's a Midrash. It says the Midrash like this, you know, that a person who works all day, he doesn't have time to go to the yeshiva and learn, you know, the, the, he's working 12 hours a day, you know, like a horse, you know, like a sus. Keep a sus paro, right? Like this is learning, he's learning, you know, he's working like that. Yeah. So what, what should you do if you don't have time to learn so much? So it says, right, that if he comes, he comes to the synagogue, he comes to the shul, this guy, right, and he hears from the rabbi, like the rabbi says, you know, he, he always says, I see every day, he says, halachot, right? So that's the way it is, you know, you have to hear from the rabbi. If you hear, it says, if you hear one halakha in the morning from the rabbi, he told you one halakha after shachrit, and then between mincha and arbit, you learn another halakha, two halakhot, right? So it says over there that if he does this, he learns two halakhot per day, because he has no more time than that. So he's called tzaddik gamu, right? He's tzaddik. He's perfect tzaddik, you know why? Because that's the best he can do. He can't do better than that. So Kadosh Baruch Hu, you know, give him a chance to go to go to the synagogue, hear two halachot every day. This is also a big thing. Gadar Gadol, right? That's exactly why we say in the uh, right uh, in, in the prayers, when we finish the prayers, the shachrit, al tikre halichot el halachot, kol ha-shonei halachot v'chol yom, right? Muftach halu she'obin ha-olam b'ba. What does that mean? That the main thing is to learn halachot. That's why, you know, if you learn halachot, it tells you, for sure you're going to be in olam b'ba. You're going to be ben olam b'ba. It doesn't say anything about, like that about learning other things, you know? Learning Hasidut, learning Kabbalah, doesn't say. Only about Halakha it says this. But if you learn Halakha every day, you're going to be Ben Olam Abba. But it says in Pirkei Avot, what? Kol Yisrael Yishem Chelek Olam Abba. Right? So over there, it doesn't say Halakhot. It just says Kol Yisrael. Understand? So here it's telling you, if you learn Halakhot, you're Ben Olam Abba. Over there it says Kol Yisrael. If they're learning Halakhot, they're not learning Halakhot. So which one is right? How do you, how do you reconcile the two? So we know what the answer is? Maran, this is what I heard from Maran, Rabbi Yishon, he told us this, that the difference is like this, you know, over here it says, Kol HaShonei HaLachot B'chol Yom, Ben HaOlam Haba, alright? Muftach Lo Ben HaOlam Haba, that's what it says. In Pirkei Avot it says, Kol HaShonei Yeshem Chelek LeOlam Haba, not the same thing. Ben Olam Haba, Chelek BeOlam Haba. What's the difference? What's the difference? So you know what the difference is? Ben Olam Haba means that he's, he's got a, like, you know, VIP membership over there, you know? He can go in anywhere he wants. He wants to go into the Yeshiva of Rambam, the Yeshiva of Rashi, Yeshiva of Rabbeinu Tam. He can go to any Yeshiva he wants over there. He can go wherever he wants. He has a he has an entry to every place in, the, in Olam Abba. He can go anywhere he wants. Free pass. Chelek le Olam Abba, you know what that means? He has Chelek. In other words, he can go somewhere over there, but not everywhere, you know? So if you learn Halakhot, you're Ben Olam Abba. That means you can go anywhere you want. Uh, but if you're, if you're just Kod Israel. That's already something else. You don't you can't go anywhere you want. You understand? This is the difference. So a person should always try to be learning halachot. Also, it says in the Gemara, Masechet Brachot. It says that Mi'az Chuban Bet Hamikdash. From the time the Bet Hamikdash was destroyed, En le Akdosh Baruch Hu be'olamo ela arba mot shel halacha. You know what that means? That Akdosh Baruch Hu only cares where's the Shechina of Akdosh Baruch Hu after the Bet Hamikdash was destroyed. The Shechina left us, you know, in a, in a certain way. So where's the Shechina? Wherever they're learning halachot over there, there's the shinaz over there. This is the thing, you know? So therefore, right, the halachot is the most important thing. Even though it says in the Zohar Kadosh, a little bit differently, in the Zohar Kadosh it says, the Kabbalah is the most important thing, you know? But that's only if you're on a level to learn Kabbalah. If you've got to that level to learn Kabbalah, and you don't, so that's already, you know, you're, you have a flaw. But if you're not on a level to learn Kabbalah, which most of us are not, so therefore, the most important thing is to learn halachot. But the question is, how do you learn halachot? I'll finish with this, and I'll keep you too long. How do you learn halachot? So the answer is like this, you know, that it depends that if you're a woman or a man, as we mentioned yesterday, right? A woman has to learn halachot. What's mutar, what's asur? A man, he has to know also the reasons behind the halachot, you know? What does this one say? Rashi, Tosfot, right? What does Rashba say? What does Ritva say? The men have to learn halacha be'iyun. They have to go deep into halacha. So if you're just learning halacha like this, you know, one halacha, this is a mutar, this is asur, so you're learning like a woman, you know? It's not, not so good like that. 
You have to learn also the reasons, the, the, the sugya, the gemara, the talmud, all kinds of things, and then you get to the halakha. So this way you know the halakha more deeper, you understand the reasons behind it, and all the other opinions that are there, all kinds of things like this. So men have to learn halakha like that, you know, go deeper. The women, not so much, they don't, they're not obligated to do this way. So when we say halachot, we mean to learn halachot deep, you know, a little bit deep. Not just to learn on the surface. So, uh, you know, a person has to make sure that he, he works on that. You know, so how, you know, how do you do it, right? How do you, how do you become more energetic in Talmud Torah? How do you do it? You know how you do it? Very simple. No TV, no internet, right? Don't waste your time with all this stuff, you know? And go to the Beit HaMidrash, go over to where there's hala, they're teaching halachot over there, in the Beit HaMidrash, in the, in the, in the synagogues, where the rabbi is teaching, and go and learn halakha, learn, learn Torah. You know, why sit at home over there watching, you know, this uh, nonsense, you know? CNN, Fox, you know, this uh, nonsense. You know? What are they telling you? The same thing every day. Same nonsense every day. What are you getting from that? You know, just a headache, a heartache, you know? You're eating your heart out from, from hearing of these things. Nothing good. The only thing which is good, as, as, as the, uh, as the, as the Kadosh Baruch Hu told us, you know, in the Talmud says, that Kadosh Baruch Hu made the Yetzirah, which, which, which is the sickness in this world, you know, the sickness is Yetzirah. And he made only one tabling, one, one medicine for the sickness. What's the, there's only one medicine for the Yetzirah. What's the medicine? Torah. There's, there's nothing else. You understand? There's only Torah. Don't look for something else to cure your problems. The only thing you, which can cure you is Talmud Torah. Talmud Torah. Can you get cool on? Baruch Adonai Leolam, Amen, Amen. Baruch Adonai Leolam, Amen, Amen.